Okay, so I've got something really cool that I've figured out to show off in today's video. Now, before I say anything, change the, if whatever resolution you're watching at, change it to 720, 60p. This is a 60 frame per second, 720p video. So, change your settings to that right now, um, because it has to do with what this video is about. So, if you're... If you've made the switch now and you're watching this and I do some motion here you can see this is a 60 frame per second video but how I'm using the same camcorders I usually use how am I getting 60 frame per second video out of them well with the help of a viewer I have figured out how to take the video from these camcorders the same camcorders I always use and make de-interlaced 60 frame per second video out of it. Now the camcorders I use, these are very old camcorders, they record 480i video, interlaced standard definition video, just like any old television broadcast. Now normally, like interlaced video can't be displayed properly on a computer. Computers weren't built to handle it, it doesn't look very good, yada yada. So the normal thing to do if you want to digitize video from a camcorder like the one I'm using right now is to take the interlace video and deinterlace it which turns it into a 30 frame per second progressive scan video um, how television you know how the old NTSC television broadcasts work is and this goes the same for recorded video onto videotape like what my camcorders do the video is in a format of 60 interlaced fields per second. Um, a field is one half of a frame and I'm only going to give a high level explanation here because there are people who can explain it way better than me but how television is basically broadcast is you have 60 fields per second and a field is a set of scan lines that make up half the picture. Scan lines that go down to make the picture and that happens on 1 60th of a second and then the next 60th of a second is the next field which takes the other lines. The lines are intertwined. I'd need two hands to demonstrate this, but imagine me uh, intertwining my fingers. Um, two fields of a television broadcast intertwine like that. So you have the even field draw first, and then you have the odd field being drawn in where the in between where the e the lines of the even field were drawn and that happens every 60th of a second. So you get 60 of these fields, 30 of them even, 30 of them odd every second. And computers just can't display that properly. Computers display frames, not fields. So when you digitize video like I'm recording right now for YouTube or whatever, you deinterlace it and what that does is that takes each pair of fields, an even field and an odd field, and it turns it into a single frame that's, you know, 720 by 480 pixels, or if you want to correct the uh, pixel aspect ratio, it'd be 640 by 480 pixels. So each of those frames, 30 of them in, a, in this digitized video, contains what were two fields, and it just puts those two fields together. Now, deinterlacing, simple as it sounds, it's actually kind of a um, kind of hard to do properly and make the video look good. There's lots of different um, systems that have been created to deinterlace de video. Sometimes it's a very simple system, and sometimes it's more complex. It sort of processes the video to put the fields together and make it look as good as possible. I can't explain it very well because I don't know a whole heck of a lot about it. But basically, um, what I'm getting to here is that I've discovered a piece of software. You may have heard of it before. It's called Handbrake. I didn't discover it, rather. Someone told me about it. That you can put um, interlaced video into it. You know, interlaced uh, 60 field per second video. And you can deinterlace it in such a way that it preserves each field as its own frame. So you end up with 60 frames per second, not 30 frames per second, but it's still processed in such a way that you can't see the interlacing. So it's been processed such that it's deinterlaced, but all the 60 field per second motion has been preserved. 
and this is wonderful, because, you know, all I've ever done is use Sony Vegas, my video editor, to deinterlace the video on its own. And I've, if you read about Sony Vegas, everybody who, you know, lots of professionals who use Sony Vegas say this. Sony Vegas sucks at deinterlacing. It just does a poor job. And so I've known this, but I didn't know how to do anything better. Um, v Westlife once told me of a piece of software he uses called QTGMC, um, which is a piece of software that works with another piece of software called AviSynth, or AVI Synth, um, to deinterlace video in this fashion to create 60 frame per second video. And I tried using QTGMC, I could not figure it out. It's so, I don't know if it's super complex or if I just didn't know what I'm, I was doing, but I couldn't for the life of me get it to work. Tried reading up on how to use it, it just got more and more complex, I gave up. I tried it twice, um, s several months apart, and gave up both times. I couldn't figure it out. But Handbrake um, is super easy to use. It's a simple GUI based piece of software and it's just super easy to use and, and it, it, it's very simple. And so it's, it's evidently working for me because here you are watching a 60 frame per second video from me. And you know, I've always known that something was off with the quality of my videos. It just wasn't as good as it could be. Well, I mean, obviously, by the standards of today, there's nothing I can do with my videos to make them look as good. I need to just get a high-definition camcorder. But a mixture of money, laziness, and not wanting to ditch my camcorders that I really love and enjoy using, um, I've just never done that. But um, I knew that I could get better quality from the camcorders I do use than I was getting. I knew something was wrong with the way I was processing my videos because... If you take one of these camcorders and you hook it up to a television set, like an old CRT television, and you watch the video from them, it looks great. It looks way better than it looks on the computer, because obviously you get the 60 field per second motion preserved, but there was also just better quality as a whole. And I've come to realize that it's just because Sony Vegas sucks so bad at deinterlacing video that it's actually reducing the quality of it once it's been deinterlaced. You know, several times over the past, what it, what has it been, eight years that I've been using videotape-based camcorders to make my YouTube videos. Um, several times I've tried, you know, different rendering formats, different, um, you know, different bit rates, higher bit rates, and, and all sorts of things. And, you know, I, I, I sort of just gave up, settled on a format which seemed to work, you know, satisfactorily and left it at that, but... Now I've figured out, oh, you know, why I wasn't get as, getting as good quality as I knew I could. And it's because, you know, I, I was just using a poor deinterlacer. And that's changed now. Beginning now with this video, I'm going to be using Handbrake to deinterlace my videos and get 60 frame per second video out of them. And the videos are going to be uploaded at 720p. The only reason I'm uploading at 720p is because um, you need at least 720p to, to enable 60 frame per second playback on YouTube. I could upload them as 480p, but it's just going to be 30 frame per second. So I'm upscaling things to 720p as well. There have been many times in the past where people have told me, they're like, hey, you should upscale your video to 720p or 1080p, and that'll increase the quality. No, it doesn't. You can't get like if you've got 480p video that's it that's the best it'll ever get you can't just stretch it out to 720p and um and make it better quality you 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 still only have 640 by 480 pixels or whatever to work with you can't add pixels you can take those pixels and stretch it out to fill more pixels but that doesn't increase your quality so no, upscaling doesn't work, but in this case I have to upscale so I can get the 60 frame per second playback. But between the, you know, the proper deinterlacing I'm doing now and possibly the upscaling, um, not only should there be 60 frame per second video now, but the video quality should be quite a bit better. I'm hoping, I'm hoping if you guys, you know, are looking at this that things look, um, a lot better just of their own accord which is really really great 
So how about we go over to the computer and I'll show you how handbrake works and um, show you what you can do to, you know, if you're using a standard definition videotape based camcorder to make the video as good quality as possible. So here's handbrake and there's a lot going on but there's only a few things you actually have to touch and it's overall very easy to use. Um, you start by opening your source which is choosing your video file that you want to convert or deinterlace or whatever. Um, everything here, oh you've got to choose, it creates a new video file um, when it deinterlaces it so you just choose where you want the new video file to be put and what you want it to be called. And then here in the picture tab, it'll show what the output um, video resolution will be, which would ideally be the same as the input resolution. But sometimes um, Handbrake will automatically detect if your video, you know, if the actual video signal doesn't fill the entire width, the entire available width of the picture. This can happen sometimes, like for example, if I film something. Um, on an analog camcorder and then I digitize it using my digital 8 camcorder as a as a digitizer um, the analog video signal won't fill the entire width of the digitized video and Handbrake will detect this so if you import a video um, that was recorded with an analog um, device it'll automatically shrink the width of it um, so, so the video um, fills, and it'll output a video file of this resolution so that the analog video fills the entire width, which is kind of neat. Um, there's nothing else here that you have to touch if you don't want to. We go over the filters, and this is where the magic happens. So by default, everything here is off. But what you want to do is, or at least this is what I do, sometimes you, you can see people argue that other things should be done, but I found this is what works for me and that's how this video has been made. You go to deinterlace and you choose Yadif and then for the preset you choose Bob. Two funny names but they work wonders. So this is you know the type of deinterlacing that's done. Then you go to the video tab. This you can leave alone. This by default will be at 30 frames per second but you want to change it to 59.94 since that's the actual fields per second of NTSC video and you want to choose or at least um, in my opinion you should choose constant frame rate there's no reason you should choose peak since that would that to me sounds like it would vary the uh, the uh, frames per second over on quality by default it's set here to 22 um, just shove it all the way to 0 That'll make your video file almost as big as um, a DV file. For example, when I digitize video from these camcorders, it outputs a DV file, which is a low compression video um, stream, and the files are very large. You know, like 20 minutes of video can be a couple of gigabytes. And so I find if I just move it all the way to zero, which obviously improves your output video quality, it's still not as big as those DV files, so I might as well just get the best video quality I can. Over here for the preset, um, by default this is set to medium if I remember right. This basically selects how efficient the compression it performs on the video is and it also places bearing on how long it's going to take to process your video file. If you go all the way to ultra fast, it's going to take about a fraction of the length of the video itself um, to process, whereas if you go all the way to placebo, which is the most efficient compression algorithm, it'll take several minutes per minute of video that you process. I have found with my own testing that if you set the quality to zero, this places no bearing on the quality of the output file, so you might as well put it all the way to ultra fast to just make it faster. It's, you're not going to sacrifice video quality when you have quality set to zero. Um, hmm. I haven't touched this encoder profile, high main or baseline. It defaults to main, I almost wonder if you should put it to high, because that would make for a higher quality video. This is just based on what I've learned 
um, playing around with rendering settings in Sony Vegas. I'm not sure. That might be better to set the... Let me see this. Sets and ensures compliance with the... Yeah, I don't know. You might just want to leave that alone or you might want to set it to high. I'm not sure. But that is that. If you go to audio, this basically shows what type of audio it's going to output. By default, it's set to AAC and it's set to a bit rate of 160. Um, that's kind of a low bit rate. You can put it up if you want. You know, from a camcorder like this, you're going to want as high of a bit rate as possible because a DV stream has PCM audio, which is not compressed at all. So ideally, you'd want as little compression as possible. I don't know what's best, so I just go to quality and I put it at the highest, which is 10. And that seems to work for me. And that's it. You click start and code and um, after a while, depending on the length of your video, um, you'll have a new video file, which is 60 frames per second. And then you can put it in your video editor. And assuming it's a standard definition uh, video file, you'll want to set your video editor to process it and output it as a 720p um, rendered video to enable the 60 frame per second on YouTube. Something else this would be good for, if you have an HDV camcorder, HDV was like the very last consumer video format. Um, it records high definition 1080i video onto a, onto a mini DV tape. If you have an HDV camcorder, so you're working with 1080i video, this could be useful to you to get 60 frame per second 1080p video for YouTube or whatever. So that's very good. Now, ideally, you know, if I ever get a high definition camcorder, I'd kind of like to get an HDV camcorder just so I don't have to lose videotape. I, I like working with videotape. Solid state media um, is obviously better in a lot of ways, faster and everything, but videotape is just what I'm used to. It's, um, and also it's a lot more durable. So yeah, that's um, how to use Handbrake to get 60 frame per second progressive scan video out of 60 field per second interlaced video. Very, very cool. And my thanks go out to uh, a viewer who told me about Handbrake. Um, I was discussing with him one day about um, videotape stuff. And uh, he's like, yeah, I use Handbrake to uh, get 60 frame per second video out of my camcorders because he has a bunch of videotape camcorders he likes to use. Um, so yeah, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Also, while I think of it, um, you've probably seen this already, but uh, thank you to everyone who responded to my previous video about the new name of the channel, um, The Maritime Girl 1. So there it is. Um, you can look and, and uh, see it there. I edited the uh, uh, channel icon, the, the profile picture that I've been using for eight years. I just took the man out of it, but I am going to dig out the Motorola bag phone and I will shoot a new picture that says girl instead of man. It'll look just the same, but it'll say girl instead of man. So I'll do that sometime next time I get to mom's. Next time I see mom, which is where my, um, where my bag phone is. Now, of course, I'm using one of my Digital 8 camcorders right now, my Sony DCR TRV350 Digital 8 camcorder, but you can do this with any interlaced um, video source. So how about we try an analog camcorder? Here's my Sony CCD TRV66 Hi8 XR camcorder from 1999. Let's switch to this and see how it looks in 720p, 60 frame per second. And here's the Hi8 camcorder, recording at 60 frames per second. Um, I just took the tape out of this camcorder and put it in this one, and because it's a Data 8 tape, um, it's recording in the Video 8 fallback mode, but nonetheless we can see how it looks in 60 frames per second. I've dug out the cassette deck here. I was at the thrift store um, a few days ago, back when I was last visiting Mom and I found three tapes that actually have music on them that's in my music collection. Uh, one tape from the 70s, one from the 80s, and one from the 90s. Um, so what I'm thinking of doing is just making a, a short video sometime just showing those tapes and playing, uh, giving you a little playback of each of them using this deck. So that should be pretty cool.
so yeah, I'm really excited, you know, this obviously isn't a replacement for a, um, for a, you know, a high definition camcorder, but it's a great stopgap until someday when I buy a high definition camcorder. And, you know, it lets you guys have slightly higher quality video in 60 frames per second while I still get to use, you know, my older camcorders that I really love and love to use. Um, so yeah, it's it's really great. I'm I'm very happy about this. Um, how about we finish this off with a really old camcorder? Right there is my Zenith VM6200 rebranded JVC GRC7 VHSC camcorder from 1986. How about we stick a tape in that? I've already got my homemade lithium-ion battery pack on it. Stick a tape in that, and uh, we'll finish this video off with some video from that. Well there, I think that's a pretty um, pretty good uh, place to wrap up for this first video in what will hopefully become a permanent new format, 720p, 60 frames per second. I'm um, very, very, very pleased and again very, um, uh, very appreciative towards the person who, uh, who told me about Handbrake and how to use it to... Uh, get 60 frame per second video. Super happy. Hopefully this will make videos a bit more watchable for some people. A um, bit higher quality and uh, yeah really really happy about that. So uh, I think that's a good place to wrap up for this video. Thank you very much for watching and uh, lots of videos to come. Video making season is technically over because I'm back in school but um, my schedule's not too bad this year, so hopefully I'll still be able to get some videos out throughout the school year. So, look out for those, and uh, I'll see you later.